Okay, we're gonna look at wounds and bleeding. Uh, we're gonna start off with the minor stuff, working right up to the more serious stuff, which is obviously things like arterial bleeding. So there are four types of, so I'll put five fingers up, four types of bleeding that you, uh, you get. The first one, the, the least serious, is capillary bleeding, and that's just a standard cut. Um, and then it gets progressively worse. You then go up to venous bleeding, which is from a vein. A classic one where I've dealt with on several occasions is from varicose veins, generally found in the legs um, and generally in older people, but you do get younger people getting varicose veins now. Um, and that's where they've bashed it and they then get a, a, a constant oozing of blood coming out of it. You can, that is a me medical emergency. Um, untreated, they will bleed to death, okay? so. Even with a venous bleed, you've got to treat that seriously. That's a 999 call. Again, even with a capillary bleed, depending on the severity of the cut, we'll decide whether you're going to call an ambulance or not. Anything that needs stitches and is bleeding profusely or the casualties in a, you know, hysteric or whatever, will uh, give you the opportunity to assess and decide, do I need to call an ambulance? Okay. If it's something you can put in the, somebody that you can put in the back of a car with a dressing to get them to hospital, sometimes that's a better option but it's a matter for you at the time. There's no right or wrong with that. Um, and then the worst type of bleeding, or the two worst types of bleeding, is catastrophic bleeding from an artery. And that's, you'll recognize straight away because you'll get the blood spurting out of the injury. Um, untreated, you've got two to three minutes to stop that bleeding before they effectively go into cardiac arrest. Um, and that's why catastrophic bleeding is treated more significantly than whether somebody's not breathing or not, because if they've got a catastrophic bleed untreated, once that blood's come out of the body, that's it, game over. So you've got to treat that one. And I will cover catastrophic bleeding. And the fourth one is internal bleeding. Now the issue with internal bleeding, as a first aider, you can't start cutting people open to treat an internal bleed. So they have to go to hospital. So it's vitally important that you identify an internal bleed uh, very, very quickly by the method of injury, what's actually happened, somebody stabbed them uh, or they've fallen, been hit by a car and they're starting to lose consciousness, responsiveness, their levels of response is going down very quickly, going very pale, cold to touch and very clammy skin. That is classic signs that they're losing a lot of blood, uh, which is called hypovolemic shock. We're going to look at minor bleeds to start off with. So we're going to look at capillary bleeds. So we're looking at a basic cut. Now, the most important thing with any cut some people are okay with other people's blood, but when it's their own blood, quite often people will pass out. So good position to have somebody be, before you treat them is sat down or sitting on the floor. Now, any blood that's coming out of your casualty presents a danger to us as first ladies, so you must, must, must be wearing gloves, okay? So can you show me, uh, you've cut yourself, have you? Okay, so we've got to use a bit of imagination here. So my casualty's got a cut to their arm. First thing I'm doing is I'm assessing that cut, okay? Now we do have a mnemonic that we use for this, which is SEEP. The S stands for sit or lay down, so she's already sat down. How are you feeling? Now. Okay, that's good. So she sat down, so I don't need it. If she said she was still feeling a bit lightheaded, I'd get her on the floor, but she's not, she's fine. Um, I'm examining the wound, okay? So I'm looking at the wound, how deep is it? What type of bleeding is coming out of it? So I'm happy that this is not too deep, and it's a capillary cut. It's not spurting, it's not oozing, okay? Once I've done that, um, I'm then going to put some pressure on it. Now, if I haven't got my first aid kit available to him at the moment, I can get my casualty to put pressure on it. So just put your hand on top of that, but before she does that, just make sure there's no embedded objects within the actual cut. And that could be a bone sticking out, could be glass or metal sticking in the actual cut. Happy that's not the case. So she's put pressure on it. Okay, now with a dressing, in your first aid kit, a couple of things you need to consider with dressings. They must be airtight. So you can see squeezing that packet, that is an airtight dressing, okay? There's a date on there, so it must be in date. Now, here's the thing, people. Common sense prevails. If it's out of date and that's the only dressing you've got, then you're going to use it. But it is something, as an employer with your company, you must check your first aid kits regularly to make sure your dressings are in date, okay? So make sure it's sterile, in date, and it's a sealed bag, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate with the training bandage. Now, with most bandages, they're stretchy, okay? Very important, don't let the bandage unroll onto the floor. That is a sterile bandage currently, it's just come out of the packaging. If I do that, that's no longer sterile, so I need to use a different bandage. So don't let them unroll onto the floor. So I'll just demonstrate quickly, rolling that back up. You wouldn't roll, reuse a bandage more than once. 
I'm just rolling that back up. Now on a bandage, a standard bandage, you have a shiny side and a fluffy side. The shiny side goes against the injury. Now when you use a bandage, the whole dressing must be covered when you use it. So what I want you to do is just lift your hand off there very quickly and I'm gonna place that on there. Right, what I want you to do now is just hold that for me, please. And now I'm gonna start wrapping this round. Now it needs to be firm. There's no point putting a bandage on uh, loose because it will, it will come off the actual injury, but also it's not putting any pressure on it. So make that nice and firm. How are you feeling then? Feeling a little bit dizzy, but I'm sad this is the best bit. Okay, that's fantastic, okay. Now, the other thing you can be, be doing with your casual whilst you're putting the bandage on is asking us some of the sample questions with the responsive cases. So, um, have you got any allergies? No. Are you on any medication? Now, why is that an important question? Because if she's on a blood thinner, that could affect her bleeding. So it's really important. Have you got any medical conditions? No. Right, fantastic. Now, when I'm happy that that's tight enough, it doesn't actually matter which side you tie this off. I often tie it on top of the injury because there's no embedded objects, so it's not an issue. Now, the best way to tie these off are like that. Over once and over twice. So just an overhand, under once, under a second time, pull it tight and it will hold. Now, we've actually dropped elevation out of the first day syllabus. However, I think it's good practice just to hold your elbow like so. Nice and easy. So that is for a basic wound dressing. Now there are other things we can do. We can do improvised bandaging. Because when the ambulance arrives, if you've called an ambulance, if it's quite a significant cut, the first thing the ambulance crew are gonna do is take that bandage off so they can assess the injury. So what you can do, if you've got a responsive, cooperative casualty, so I'll forget that one's been injured, we'll look at the other arm now. Hold that on there for me, please. Just hold the bandage on. Treated, okay? She's putting pressure on it. You've got a bandage, the absorbent part, the, the dressing is on the actual injury, and that is sufficient, okay? Same with a head injury. Just hold that on there for me, please. As Soon as the ambulance arrives, we're gonna ask you to take that off, and it's just take it off. Let's have a look. Okay, pop that back on there. Now, if she's not being cooperative, you could tie it on, and that's easily done. All I'm gonna do with a head bandage, just pop that around there. Try not to cover their eyes or their mouth or their ears, even if they are talking a lot. Okay, just take that round there like so. Round the base of the head. Thought you've got a lot of hair. Hold on. I'm getting the hair all caught up in my bandage. Here we go. Nice way to absorb the blood is with that to all that hair. That's good. And then just tuck that in underneath there, okay? Job done, happy with that? Right, um, only other one is, if you've got a hand injury, improvised bandaging again, inside. If it's a cut that goes across the hand, that hand is better closed. If it goes that way, it's better open, so it doesn't open the cut up. So we're assuming she's cut her hand across, just pop that in there and make a fist for me, please. Just grab that as well, make a fist treated okay so it's improvised bandaging if you wanted to go a bit further than that and let's say we stick something in there da, da, da. Oh, in fact, I'll tell you what we use, we use that. pop that in your hand what I can do is keep your thumb out to the side now why am I keeping a thumb out to the side I'll explain that in a second with any bandaging you do you always need to have access to a digit. And the reason for that is twofold. And you can see this doesn't take long. It doesn't have to be too technical. Keep it nice and simple. I find people make bandaging far too complex and it shouldn't be. It should be nice and easy. Okay, now how are you feeling now? She's giving me a thumbs up. Okay, that's one reason for it. The other reason is, if I need to make sure I have not put that bandage on too tight, I can do this thing called capillary refill. So I squeeze the nail, the thumb, and you see it goes white, and then it immediately goes red, eventually, okay? So squeeze it, and what you're looking for is capillary refill, so you're looking for good circulation. So if you put a bandage on too tight, the other thing is your casualty, if you do it like an arm bandage, if you put that on too tight and she starts complaining of pins and needles in her hand, that's because the bandage is on too tight and it almost becomes like a tourniquet. Not good, 